Medtronic identified a number of years ago, it was at least a decade or more ago, unmet medical need of pacemaker patients being unable to receive uh, MRI. If you look at the demographics of who receives a pacemaker and who receives an MRI, it's the same demographic group. In fact, about 75% of patients who get a pacemaker will be indicated for an MRI during their lifetimes. MRI is a powerful diagnostic tool. It's unparalleled in its ability to image soft tissues. And right now, about 200,000 pacemaker patients each year are being denied the necessary MRI scan. The patient, or they're not really patients anymore, right? I mean, they're, they're healthy human beings and they should not be penalized. When we first uh, started the program, it seemed like it was going to be pretty straightforward. This project simply turned out to be a much more complicated physics experiment and development exercise than we ever imagined that it would be. As we got farther into the development, every time we would do a test or complete another analysis, we found out there were things about the environment or interactions between the environment and the system that we hadn't understood before. You can't just go to some book and look it up and go to page 46 and understand exactly how a device will interact with this machine. So we've had to figure it out. We really had to understand how the MRI worked, understand the interactions, then define requirements and test methods around each of those interactions. Every year we looked back and, and we were, maybe amazed isn't the right word, but surprised at how much we had learned since the previous year. And, and you essentially, you don't know what you don't know until you discover it. So you got this machine, and this is big magnet, and it's the 1.5 Tesla, for example, is 30,000 times the Earth's magnetic field. So it's a big magnet. You've got a fluctuating magnetic field as well, a second field, and then you've got a fluctuating radio frequency field, which is electromagnetic fields, very high power. And so what we're doing here is we're taking something that's very, very sensitive piece of electronics, a pacemaker, uh, putting it in a very hostile environment from a electrical and an RF perspective. And we're expecting not only the pacemaker to operate properly, uh, but also not to pick up too many uh, erroneous signals from this very powerful machine. If you look at some of the published literature or single center studies, they'll say that, you know what, if you adequately monitor the patient, take the proper precautions, modern systems are safe. We know both of these issues to be uh, untrue. In fact, there have been reports of things that have happened that are not good for patients, of problems with pacing, of problems with threshold changes of the pacemaker, multiple problems that we know can arise theoretically and in fact have arisen in the clinical sphere. And that's really driven our development program and driven our perspective that a system must be designed for safety, not for chance. The bench testing and modeling was incredibly complex for this device, probably more complicated than any other development project that I can remember in my career here at Medtronic. We wanted to be able to push the limit of the technology by testing many complex combinations of devices, equipment, and patient variability in the MRI environment. The first stage was uh, numerical modeling, which involved MRI coils, human body models in different positions and different uh, scenarios corresponding to um, some clinical situations. We used modeling techniques that were kind of first of the kind in the industry from a pacing perspective. We created a human body library. Human library spanned approximately the second to the 97th percentile of the human population in terms of, of size and shape. In addition to that, those uh, bodies were electrically correct from, a, from an RF perspective. We don't have uh, confidence in the results unless we validate this by comparison with measurements. And obviously, we could not perform model validation directly in humans. To validate the model, we used a, a body phantom, which would be a surrogate for a human. We tried to represent the human as best we could with this non-human structure. We then conducted over 1,500 measurements, and we then compared each measurement then to the simulated case. And we saw a very good agreement between our measured and simulated cases. We tested beyond physiologic limit. Regardless whether the MR scanner is capable of taking it to physiologic limit or not, 
our device will be safe. This is what gave us confidence when we went into the relatively small human clinical trial. We had enough design margin and that our solution was robust. We had high confidence that we, there would not be any complications in the human clinical trial, and those were borne out by the results. The clinical trial protocol required 470 patients to be implanted with the Revo MRI system. Patients enrolled in the studies were followed just like a standard patient who would have been implanted with a pacemaker. The main difference is we asked them to undergo a non-indicated MRI scan about 9 to 12 weeks after implant. And once those patients had been followed one month after the MRI, which would have been four months after implant, we started writing the clinical report for submission to the FDA. There were uh, several cases where patients had an undiscovered problem that was discovered as part of the clinical study. Because of those incidental findings, it clearly demonstrates the unmet need and the importance of the Revo MRI project. Our physicians and customers understand this enormous unmet need, and nothing illustrates that better than the fact that this device throughout the clinical development process has been the number one requested compassionate use device that this company's ever had. When the FDA receives a submission, they will start their review and they have 180 days. Rev MRI was a little bit different to where we were panel tracked, so we, in addition to responding to their questions, we also had to develop our presentations for panel. Most um, clinical trials or new products do not actually end up going to panel, only new, first of its kind, end up going to panel. To be able to distill down 12 years of highly technical data into a 90-minute presentation that described your product and provided enough information so the panel members could make a recommendation on the supporting data was a huge challenge for us. The science is on the fringes of science, if you will, and it's hard to explain. And so we knew that was a challenge going in to multiple different audiences. Through the process of the day, all those months of preparation really paid off. Not only had we done all of our homework, that we understood the system inside and out. At the end of the day, the FDA panel agreed, uh, and they gave us a unanimous vote uh, recommending approval to the FDA. Now as we come into the market in the U.S., we bring a system that's really been thoroughly analyzed, designed, tested, and clinically proven to be safe in the MRI environment. And we bring this ahead of, of anyone else in the industry. The Revo MRI SureScan pacing system is MR conditional, designed to allow patients to undergo MRI under specified conditions for use. A complete SureScan pacing system, including a Revo MRI SureScan IPG and two Capture Fix MRI SureScan leads, is required for use in the MRI environment. Any other pacing system combination may result in a hazard to the patient during an MRI scan. When programmed to on, the MRI SureScan feature allows the patient to be safely scanned while the device continues to provide appropriate pacing. Refer to the Revo MRI pacing system conditions for use located in the device manuals prior to scanning a patient. Consult Medtronic's website at Medtronic.com or call Medtronic at 1-800-328-2518. You can't update software to make a system MR safe or MR conditional. This has been built from the ground up specifically for use in this environment. Over the past 50 years, there are a few inflection points in the growth of this market. MRI is the next milestone. I can't think of a reason why physicians wouldn't want to use this device. And I think our view is eventually this will become just standard for low and high power devices. As a number one medical device company, I think this is our duty. We're going to lead the way of this MRI revolution.